first press program. I'm pressing it, Dad, and nothing's happening. You gotta turn on the power, Joe. <laughs> I got you. Okay. Program. Press the day. All right. The time. Check. Channel. Four. Terrific. You're all set. Now the easy. Press timer. All right. Here we go. Well, there's the time. It's 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. last night that you wrote. Really? I wrote a few of those. Which one was it? It was the one with this little black kid living with two white people. <laughs> That's what they all were, Joe. Wow, must have been easy to write. <laughs> so, what are you working on now? Zip. Nothing. Zero. I haven't sold anything since the first season of Quantum Leap. Nowadays, TV is being run by kids. Yeah. You know Carl Fisher in my world sciences class? Well, weekdays after school, he is the vice president of comedy development at Fox. Could you introduce me? <laughs> I'm kidding, Steve. Hi, guys. Hey, Steve. Hey, Tony. Hey, Tony. Hey. Gotta go. It's late for a meeting. Nice talking to you. Goodbye. He looks great. Yeah, and he's doing great, too. He's got a super job and a steady girlfriend. And you should see her. She is built like She's a... built... <laughs> like your brother's girlfriend. Hi. Hi, Vinny. Hi, Vinny. Sign up for the Navy yet? <laughs> That's very funny, Mr. Russo. Um, by the way, Dad, Vinny and I are going to stop by Grandpa's after school tonight. Why, did you lose a bet? No, because I like hanging out with him and his musician friends. These guys have some great stories. There was this one about a one-armed bass player and these two hookers. <laughs> never mind. <clears throat> what, what do you mean, never mind? What happened? This is it. What is what? The perfect sitcom. This is it. You guys, think about it. Single dad raising three kids. One struggled with dope. One is a fabulously hip and funny teenaged girl. The other one is... <laughs> like Joey. But dad is hip too, see? He's a musician. And so is the kid's grandpa who's the ex-wife's father, and the two guys hate each other. This has got everything. Kids, conflict, music. You got a dog? No. So we'll break the form. America is ready for something new. Try this. Blossom's dating a guy that Dad hates. <laughs> that could happen. Joey gets a crush on his big brother's girl. That could happen, too. <laughs> or, Dad's having money problems and has to take a civilian job. You see what I'm saying here? People can relate to this stuff because it's real. I don't think so, Steve. We'll pitch it together. No, I, uh... You get half. Half of what? 
if you hit the home run and get a top 10 series that syndicates, well, you could be talking millions. Millions? Millions. It's, it's the, the Russo. It's Russo. So, what have you got for me today? Okay. It's a family sitcom based on Nick's life. Wait a second. Isn't that what Seinfeld's doing? The difference is that Seinfeld is a genius, Nick is just a pathetic loser. <laughs> we need an 8 o'clock. Is it an 8 o'clock show? That's the only place you could put it. Dead, solid, perfect at 8 o'clock. Kind of like Cosby, only darker. <laughs> Shoot. Okay. Single dad. Mom's dead. Mom split. Why? Wasn't he good enough for her? We don't want this guy to look like some kind of a loser. She needed space. Who are the kids? Billy, the oldest boy, is a recovering substance abuser. Whoa. Is he in the program? Yes. We're both in the program. That's great. Oh, yeah. We're finally at peace with ourselves. It's just super. <laughs> Good. So he um struggles with his demons. He takes life one day at a time. Good. I like it. Who else? The 16-year-old girl is named Rosie. We do all the typical boy coming of age stories, but with a girl. Good twist. Is she sexy? What do you mean sexy? Well, we'd like her to look like a blow-up doll. <laughs> Well, she's bright and pretty and has a, a sophisticated, wry sense of humor. <laughs> she's wonderful. Can't she be wonderful and have big jugs? No, she can't. Okay, who else? A great-looking Luke Perry, Jason Priestley kind of kid, but actually young. <laughs> Good. Is that it? Uh, th that's the immediate family. Dad's a studio musician, so guest stars are easy. Stevie Wonder drops by. George Michael, you know. George Michael. <laughs> Plus, Dad's got a young wife. A young wife? She's a gorgeous lingerie model, like uh, Harry Connick Jr.'s girlfriend. Maybe we can get her. She's approximately the same age as the oldest son. Good sexual tension, I like it. The people over 40 will run away screaming. Big problem. Now wait till they see Gramps. <laughs> he, he's full of life. The guy is old, but shows no signs of being old. <laughs> Cappuccino? Is there a cappuccino, Steve? <laughs> there could be. <laughs> Three cappuccinos, Grant. I think we've got us a new show. Yes. Be right there. Sorry, we've got to go. There's trouble on the Seinfeld set. <laughs> Poor Jerry. <laughs> This is so cool. I would die if I ever saw myself on television. It's just a crowd scene, girls. I have no control over whether you'll be picked. There will be hundreds of people there. Right. You've got no control, Mr. Co-Creator. <laughs> That's just the title. Yeah, well, I don't care if we're just auditioning for extras. I mean, just the chance to go to an actual professional audition is enough for me. Well, I'm jazzed, I'm pumped, I'm ready to go. I'll be down in a minute. I just have to get my tie. So who do you think's going to play you? Well, first of all, it's not really me. Rosie is just sort of like me, that's all. Yeah, 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 but who would your first choice be? I honestly don't have one. Winona Ryder. <laughs> that would be so outrageous. Oh, please. There's not a chance in this universe. Yeah, I know, but still, I mean, listen, they're probably going to go with some goofball starlet type with big hooters. <laughs> Hey, you know what would be amazingly cool? What? 
Please, they fixed you out of this audition. I mean, out of these hundreds of people, and you got to play yourself. Six, please. What are you kidding? There's a better chance of getting Winona Ryder. Please, <laughs> they want to go with a nobody. Would you stop it? <laughs> okay, let's hit it. Um, Dad, what kind of girl are they looking for to play my part? Last time I talked to Larry, they were thinking about turning Rosie into a boy. <laughs> Told you. Imagine meeting any of these people. I mean, Scott Blackula, Jay Leno, Jerry Seinfeld. I mean, could you imagine what would you say to him? I'd do my impression for him. Why doesn't he just avoid the other parakeet? That's great. Who was that, Kramer? <laughs> no, it's Seinfeld. No, it's not. Yes, it is. That is my Seinfeld impression. <laughs> oh. It's really good. But wouldn't you be embarrassed to talk to somebody famous? But wouldn't you be embarrassed to talk to somebody famous? Why? TV stars love it when you talk to them. Oh my God, it's Robert Stack. Hi there. You two lost? Are you here to audition for something? Are you alive? <laughs> nice talking with you. Weird kids. Well, I feel silly. Oh my god. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, it's that guy from Cheers! Yes, that is John Ratzenberger. I heard he's super nice and really down to earth. Okay, we can't freeze this time. Hi, John. Hi. <laughs> hey. Hey. That's a stupid looking hat. <laughs> One of us gets to be an extra. She holds out for the other one, got it? Deal. Okay, deal. <laughs> Ladies. Gentlemen. We're gonna go out on a limb here. We're not gonna hire a star to play Rosie. We're going to create a star to play Rosie. And this is our little Rosie. <laughs> appreciation. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> hey, Joey, do you know anything about an 18th century composer named Gustav Friedmier? Only that he was born in 1814 in Vienna on August 9th, a Thursday. Grew up to write 16 symphonies, marry a milkmaid named Helga, and was the first man to eat cheese dumplings in the Black Forest. <laughs> Joey! Why are those girls with you? It sweeps. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hello, sweetie. Oh, you 
guys. <sighs> I just can't help it. Who wants breakfast? Mom, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. Whoops. Hi, everybody. Hi, Gramps. Hi, Devin. Don't say hi to me. <laughs> Why not? Because I got an attitude. <laughs> Kid, I'll buy you a soda. Where are you off to tonight, Gramps? I am going to see Robinson's beautiful widow. I didn't know Charlie died. He didn't yet. <laughs> I'm glad we've got this moment alone, Pumpkin. You know, sometimes I get so busy with work and stuff, I forget I have such a great kid. I'm talking about Joey. <laughs> But you know, when the whole world's gone crazy around you and the old ways aren't the hip ways and people out there are trying to get you to do and say things you're not really sure of, I want you to remember one thing. And I don't say this in a phony Steve Martin, Bill Murray, Dennis Miller, hipper than thou, unctuous, fawning kind of way, but the truth is, Daddy loves you, little girl. Do you think I was unreasonable? No. I'll tell you what I do think, though, Dad. I think you've gotten... attitude. <laughs> oh, man. in Beverly Hills. It's worth millions, but wait till you see the living room. That's right. One entire wing of the house is an exact duplicate of the set on Rosie. My first question was obvious. How do I look? You look great, Mary. Oh, thank you. Now let me ask you, why a duplicate of Rosie set? Well, to keep me grounded, of course, to remind me where I came from. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. When the show started, it was the Russos, an ensemble piece, a family show. What happened? How did it become Rosie, a star vehicle on which you won't even allow a guest? Well... <laughs> Why a duplicate Rosie set? Well, to keep me grounded, of course, to remind me where I came from. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that. When the show started, it was the Russos, an ensemble piece, a family show. What happened? How did it become Rosie, a star vehicle on which you won't even allow a guest? Well, <laughs> I had nothing to do with that, Mary. You see, the people told the network what they wanted to see, and mm -hmm. the network gave it to them. Simple as that. All right. How did you get the part of Rosie in the first place? Well, I've been studying acting for years. And a friend. Thank you, dear. Some friends suggested I read the script. I liked it, I said yes, and the rest is television history. You recently married. <laughs> yes. Tell us about it. I'll do better than that. I'll show him to you. Come in, honey. Hi, babe. Hi, schnookums. <laughs> 
This is my husband, Vinny Bonatardi. Vinny, this is Mary Hart. Hey. Hey, yourself. <laughs> Vinny is so wonderful. How did you two meet? Through a friend. <laughs> now he's executive producing my show and come mid-season starring in one of his own. Called? Vinny. Vinny. <laughs> hey, watch it. Oh, I'm so sorry, ma'am. I'll clean it right up. Here you go. 1993, the night you won your first Emmy. Uh, I was so nervous. In your acceptance speech, you said, none of this would have been possible without Blossom. That's right. That's always been a mystery. Tell us tonight, who was Blossom? Tell her, honey. There is no Blossom. <laughs> Blossom is the flower within all of us that needs to be fed and nurtured so that it can grow. Your Blossom, Vinny is Blossom, my mate is Blossom. The point is that without sunlight and rain, nothing can rise out of the ground and ever have the chance to touch the sky. It's moments like this that make it all worthwhile. I said, do they have to be human? Well, it's a show about a family. If they're not humans, what are they? Well, what were the penguins in Batman? <laughs> penguins? Well, sure, but they became people. <laughs> I must have gone out for popcorn. <laughs> Nick, they were so cute and human-like, they became human. The penguins tested higher than Michael Keaton. So you're saying penguins? Suggesting. You're the writers. It, it, it's wild, but I think it could work. It could work? I mean, what are these talking penguins? <laughs> I mean, do they speak? <laughs> Could be a voiceover thing. <laughs> All right. Let us fiddle with it. I think it'll be good. It, 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 it's an exciting concept. <laughs> you look odd, Nick. You look... What's the word? Perplexed. Perplexed. You look perplexed. Well, actually, I, I, I am a little perplexed, guys. <laughs> I mean, this started out as a show about my family. You even cast a friend of my daughter's as the little girl. You, you love the script. And now you're saying, let's just chuck the whole thing and turn them into penguins? I'm sorry, I, I, I don't want to rain on anybody's parade, but this does not make any sense to me. <laughs> Okay, Nick. You win. I respect your artistic integrity. No penguins. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> How do you feel about chimps? Now you're talking. Hi. Hi. Well, I guess you heard, huh? Yeah. I'm sorry. That's okay. I didn't want to be on TV anyway. I mean, you get a swelled head. You forget your friends, fire your writers. <laughs> hey, once your dad got to make some money, right? No, they fired him. Steve, too? Steve sold the Penguin Show to CBS. <laughs> God, what a business. Tell me about it. Hi. Well, here it is. A rough cut of the Russos, episode one. Kind of afraid to look at it. It's now called Everything's Coming Up Rosy. Why did they do that? Because your character tested through the roof. Well, let's watch it. Yeah, 
I mean, after all, how bad could it be? <laughs> Rosie, she's the cutest chip on the 